Hey, we're going through the series of sevens, and, and um, we've looked at seven things God loves. We've looked at seven things God hates. We've looked at, at seven ways God blesses. Let me think. We've also looked at seven reasons he had to die. We look, we've looked at uh, seven, I think maybe we're at seven things he said from, from the cross, seven words from the cross. And today we're going to talk about the seven ways the maker cares. Now, we saw in the first message and the things that he loves, that one of the things that he loves is he loves light. Okay, He brought light into the darkness and it dispelled it. Okay, And, and that's really awesome because the way he set this place up is it was a community that was vibrant, full of life. And in and, and, and matter of fact, there was no such there was no end to it. But then we looked at the seven things that God hates, and we saw that this this corrupt these corrupt shadows came into this bright living place. And and what, what came with that was 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 forces that threatened life and community. And ever since, okay, the teachings of the scriptures are this: ever since the world has been confused. There's much beauty in this world. Would you agree with me? I, there really is. I mean, this is an amazing world that God has given us, and, 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 but it's also hostile to life, right? You know, it's, it's chaotic sometimes, yet there's, there's purpose behind it. It's purposeful, and, and it's full of light, yet there are shadows, right? There are these dark places, and, 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 and we live in a kind of shadowlands, and, and sometimes we experience the light, more than we experience the darkness, right? And other times it seems like, I need some light, right? Watch this video real quick. We all go through times when it just feels like there's nothing but darkness in our lives, when negative circumstances stack up. But Psalm 1828 says, the Lord my God lights up my darkness. He invites you to bring him into your darkness. And you can do that really simply just through a prayer, just speaking with him. On that black wall, that looks kind of spooky, huh? <laughs> Where did I come from, right? And, and, uh, but what I want to do today is, right as we begin our service, I want, I'd like to pray. Let's pray together. Let's, let's, let's pray. Father, we pray. We pray together. We pray that you would light up the darkness that we experience in this life. As we travel through these shadow lands of this life, would you continually remind us that you are our shepherd, yes. so we shall not be in want. Please, Make us lie down in green pastures. Lead us beside quiet waters. Lord, we ask you to restore our souls. Guide us in paths of righteousness. Yes. Even during those times when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, remind us to fear no evil because you are with us. Even when we're surrounded by threats, would you pre prepare a sustaining table for us? Would you please anoint the wounds we suffer with your healing oil? Lord, we ask you would, you, would you cause our emotional, physical, and resource cups to overflow? And at times when it feels like all is lost, Lord, remind us and help us to believe that because we're under your care, goodness and love will surely follow us all the days of our life. And when that time, when our time on this earth is over, we will dwell in the house of the Lord yes. forever. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now, that prayer was written by a, a poet named David. And, and, and David's life had an interesting trajectory to it. And he, he was the son of a shepherd, okay? That's how he started off in life. And he ended up becoming... A great king. And, 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 uh, and so he had seen all different things in the journey that he had in his life, but he had been a shepherd. And so he used the imagery of a relationship between the shepherd and its sheep, okay, um, you know, to um, describe, guess how many ways God cares for us? Seven. There's seven. There has to be seven, right? There's seven ways that God cares for us. And, and as we deal with the shadowlands of this life and the hurts, the stresses, the darkness that we sometimes experience of this mixed up and fallen world, you know, um, that can sometimes make us wonder. It's like, really? You ever feel that way? Yeah. Does anybody care? Is there any help? Is there any help? Is there hope for the future? Yeah. 
Yeah. Is there help for today? And, 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 and that prayer talks about seven ways that God cares for us. The first thing he talks about is this, that he cares for us uh, by giving us rest. Okay, um, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides those calm, quiet waters. You know, in, if, you, if you look back to the beginning of the story, like I referenced the seven things that God loves, at the beginning of the story, there was a garden that was to be tended by men and women. And, 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 uh, and it was, the work was pleasurable. The work was, was invigorating. And, but because this shadow came in, this evil, hateful stuff entered in, work became toil, work became stressful, and sometimes exhausting. And, and, and now we live in this fallen, kind of mixed up place. And, and, and we tend towards exhaustion sometimes in life. And, and, and we need that help for today. And we also need rest for today. And it, he says, make me your shepherd. You know, I will give you rest for your soul. I will, I will make you lie down on that green grass that's next to that still water. And you're just going to chill. Do a cleansing breath. <sighs> Just chill. Just chill. You know, and, and now what does a sheep do when it lies down in green pastures? Any of you have sheep? Yeah. <laughs> Take a while. It's not a, it's not a trick question, okay? Um, what do sheep do when they lie down in green grass? They, it rests. It, it does something called nothing. Okay? It just sits there. You know, and... and uh, um, Sheep are in incredible. They're experts. They're tremendous at doing nothing. Okay, and, and uh, um, now, how are we at that? Some of you are pretty good at that, I think. But, um, you know, but, but a lot of us, we stink at doing nothing, right? We're not very good at it. And, and, and I know, like, you aren't, you know, because and, and, uh, you know, I know you, you know, and, and, uh, and, and uh, we're generally good at doing something, right, but really bad at doing nothing. And, and now the, the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, they had two words to describe time, okay? One of the words was this word chronos. And we live in a chronos world, which is, what time is it? What time is it? You know, oh, I gotta get going, right? That, that, that world. Chronos time is always consuming, okay? And then there was this other word called kairos time. And, 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 and kairos is the idea that time is like a gift. It's an opportunity. It's, 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 it's a, it, it could be a season. Ka Kairos time doesn't ask, what time is it? Kairos time asks, what is this time for? What is this time for? And, and, and the world tempts us to live according to Kronos time all the time, you know, and it tends to impoverish our souls. And, and Kronos devours our children if we live by that all the time. As a matter of fact, in ancient Greek literature, the, the, the depiction of the, the Greek god Kronos, okay, was this bearded guy, okay, and this is what he did. He was famous for it. He clipped the wings of Cupid. Okay? So love couldn't fly around anymore, right? And, and, and he also devoured his children. Isn't that wild? You know, and, and, uh, and those we love. And, and, and so... But on the other hand, Kairos teaches us to be thankful. Kairos, is, Kairos time is what the psalmist prayed when he, when he wrote, teach us to number our days, O Lord, you know, um, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. In other words, teach us that this is not just another day. This is the day you made. Let me be glad and rejoice in this day that you've given me. And you've given me the gift of another day. Now, the truth is, we have to live in chronos time, right? We, we, I mean, it's just, it's just part of life. You know, it's a necessary part of life. But God purposefully, the way he designed us, he says, I want you with regularity to step out of chronos time and enter into kairos time. This time that says, what is this time for? Okay, not what time is it? And, and he called it a Sabbath. And he said this, he said, it was a day for... I'm going to say he said it this way. It's a day for paying attention to counting your blessings, right? You know, to, to kneeling in the grass, to being idle, to just hanging out, strolling in the fields 
enjoying this world, this day that he's given you. And, and not to do it just for a few minutes, but to do it for an extended period of time, even a whole day. That rhythm of life, you know, turning our thoughts back to him, you know, and, and reaffirming that the Lord is my shepherd. And with, under his care, I'm not going to, I shall not want. He's going to make me lie down in green pastures. He'll lead me be, beside these still waters. One person put it this way. If you don't come apart for a while, you will come apart in a while. Okay? And, and you need that. You know, and, and, uh, um, and did, you, did you catch that line? He makes me lie down? Yeah. Makes me? You know, some of you have little children. Some of you can remember back when you had little children. Sometimes those kids would just be like, okay, they need a nap. Okay, they just need it right now, you know, type of thing. And do they want to lie down? No. no. You know, and, 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 and God says, you're just like that sometimes. And you need to lie down. You need rest so that you can challenge and you can charge those other six days and the challenges that life bring you. You know, you need that rest. So he provides us rest. He makes us lie down. He leads us. To places of rest. And, and, and the second idea is this. He, so he provides rest. He, he gives us restoration. Okay. And, and uh, because we live in this fallen, mixed up world, what it tends to do is it tends to, we tell, tend to develop these depleted souls, these depleted lives. And, and, and he says, you know what? You need restoration. And I'm the one that can offer that to you. You know, people used to say back in the day, before any of us were born, um, he used to say, this was like a, something that when you catch up with a friend or something like that, you'd say, how is it with your soul? How is it with your soul? How are you doing? You know, but kind of like indicating in like a deeper way, you know, and, and you know, you go to a doctor to discover how it is with your body, right? And, and, and you go, where do you go to discover how it is with your soul? You know, and a healthy soul you know, experiences shalom, experiences that peace, that wholeness, that well-being, that Hebrews call it shalom. And, and it's the idea of harmony, that there's harmony between your, your, if you think of your soul as being the real you, okay? It's your mind, it's your emotions, it's your body, it's, it's all of you, okay? It's the whole thing. And, and, and he says, you know, the idea is, is I can't fix my soul. All I can do is give opportunity for him to fix it. And that comes back to the first idea of rest. Does that make sense? That we have to make space in our lives so that we can experience that. And, and, and it, there's a, it's an important principle. The only way you know, we can be in a position to take care of other people is if we're okay. Right? You know, the, uh, I'm actually getting on a plane this afternoon to go to my uh, cousin's memorial um, um, in Dallas uh, that's going to happen tomorrow. And, and, um, and, and uh, I'll hear this, you know, this, they, they have that, that, that thing that nobody pays attention to, right, at the beginning where they tell you to put, you know, this is what you're, what's going to happen if a crash. We're going to have you put your leg, head between, you know, all this kind of stuff, right? And, and what's, one of the instructions is kind of a little bit counterintuitive. Okay, they say if we have a rapid decompression in the plane, okay, that sucks the <gasps> air out of you, okay, these, these the oxygen things are supposed to drop down, right? And if you're traveling with a small child or you're traveling with someone who's infirm, what are you supposed to do? Put them on your first. And it's counterintuitive for a parent, right? You're going, oh my gosh, Johnny, you got to get this. And then you start passing out. And little Johnny doesn't have his oxygen, and you, now you're on the ground. It, it really makes sense if you think about it. How are you going to help those that are in your charge if you're just on the floor, passed out? You need to take care of yourself so that you can take care of those around you. Make sense? That's the idea. Restoration. Rest. And, and, and then the next thing is guidance. He cares for us. By giving us guidance in life. He said, you know, we live in this fallen, mixed up place, these shadows that we enter sometimes, and we tend to lose our way. Like with regularity, most of us, right? With regularity. And, and, uh, and, and, and we need help for today, which means we need guidance, 
Lord, where do you want me to go? What am I supposed to do? What's the priority here? You know, and, and the shepherd says, I will guide you in the right way. I will guide you in paths of righteousness. When you think of right, righteousness, just think, I'm going I'm to show you what the right thing to do is. Okay, it's that simple. What the right thing to do is. And, and he says, he puts his name on for my namesake. Okay, you're a, represent, I'm a, you're a representative of me. And so I need you to go, I need to show you what you, what you need to do, you know, and, 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 and he promises to show us the right path, the right way, you know, the right, the good way to go. And he stakes his reputation on it. And, 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 and I think there's basically five ways, if you can think of it this way. You know, he does, he uses scriptures. He uses the word, his, his, his word, the Bible. Okay. He uses this, his spirit sometimes will give us those promptings where we say, okay, I, this is the right thing to do. I just know it is. Okay, I can feel it. I know if I don't do this, it's, I know there's, I'm, not, I'm not on the right path. You know, and, and, and then there's the, the saints, the advice of his people. You go to somebody and you say, hey, I'm not sure what to do. You know, a, 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 somebody that's a brother or a sister, you know, come alongside and say, you know, what do you think? And sometimes you'll get that, that, that direction. Sometimes it comes through common sense, right? It just, it's just that through our reasoning of something, this just seems like the right path, okay? And sometimes it comes through circumstances, right? You know, you get this, you, there's kind of like, okay, this happened, that happened and stuff, and so now I guess this is what I'm supposed to do, okay? And, and, and you know, and this is it, this is it. And so I remember I got, my circumstances went a sad direction several years ago. I had to have pretty major surgery on my Achilles tendon on my right foot, which kept me from driving for a really long time. And, and they had to detach it, clean up the heel, and then screw the thing back in. 10 weeks in a cast in the middle of the summer. Uh. What did he do to me? He sat me on my butt. Okay, and, and, uh, and I didn't like it. And I had to sit there. And you know, one of the things I did is I read through the entire Old Testament. I hadn't done that in a long time. And I took advantage of the circumstances I was in and, and made something good happen out of it. Sometimes even negative circumstances, if you look at them the right way, you know, some, all of a sudden you go, oh, okay, this is an opportunity, not an inconvenience so much. And so, okay? So rest, restorations, guidance. The fourth way is through confidence, okay? I will fear no evil. You know, there's much in our mixed up world to dread. There's much to fear in our world, you know, and yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Have you been there? Where it's like, wow, you know, and, and, and you know, sometimes we just realize we need, we need protection. We need, we need confidence. We need to be delivered from paralyzing fear, you know, and, and, and God says, Make me your shepherd, okay? And you'll walk, be able to walk through those dark valleys sometimes, those valleys that are really dark, and you will be able, you'll, you'll be surprised. You'll realize I'm with you, and the promise that I'm with you will alleviate your fears, will, will wash them away. And, and, and he says, my rod, which, is, which was something a shepherd used for protection of the flock, and the staff, which was something he'd use to guide the flock, to nudge them along, they will comfort you. I will protect you, and I will guide you through those dark places. If, if he's the one doing the leading, you know, his name is on the line, you know, and, and, uh, and he says, you know, be confident in my ability. You know, you're going to deal with fears. You got to face fears straight up, okay? This is no, like, just, just suck it up, buttercup, you know, don't worry about it and stuff. Face your fears, okay? And then say, you know what, Lord, here's the, th the threats I see. Uh, I, be honest. You know, I'm, I'm afraid. There's all kinds of ways I could be taken out right now. You know, and, 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 and the maker will, you know, sometimes help you to slap a silly smile on your face and keep going. You know, and the more you learn how to do that, the more you go, is that all you got? Are you kidding me? You know, and, and, and uh, um, I've been, after I've been through this and this and this, I got confidence. I can get through this. Okay. And, and so rest, restoration, guidance, confidence are, are ways that he takes care of us. And then he sustains us. He said he prepares a table for us. So we can slap a silly smile on our face and keep going. 
And, but sometimes, you know, you live with generalized fear sometimes, and, and, and confident living seems elusive because you're sitting there and, you're, and you know, kind of think of the analogy of a, of a flock. The wolves are right there in the trees on the edge of the meadow. They're right there, you know, and, 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 and he says this. He says, I will prepare a table for you. That, think of a meal that's going to sustain you, that's going to, that's going to fill you up in and, 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 and the presence of your enemies. The wolf is going to be sitting there. You can see his little eyes coming out of the forest, and you know he's there. Sometimes you see his, his fangs and stuff, and you're just going to sit there and eat your, your you know, your, your pudding or whatever, you know, and, and, uh, um, and, and you're going to be there enjoying a meal in the presence of an active threat is the idea. It's a dangerous world. Okay, and, and, and uh, he says, you, you, I will strengthen you even though the wolves are at the edge of the meadow. You can eat even when you know those, those critters are out there wanting to eat you. Okay, you'll be the one that will eat. And so he cares for us but through giving us rest, restoration, guidance, confidence, sustenance. And then the next one is healing. You anoint my head with oil. Now what that is, is an image of a shepherd. Shepherds would carry flasks of oil because the, the sheep would go, they're looking for something to eat and stuff and they'd get their heads stuck in brambles and, and thorns and stuff and they get, they get scratched up. They get scratched up. And so the shepherd would come along and he'd put, anoint, he'd put, he'd put the oil on those wounds to help promote healing. It's the idea of intimacy. It's the idea of care. It's the idea of the promotion of healing and, and, and he says, you make me your shepherd. I'm going to take care of you. I got this. I will be with you. And the se seventh thing is abundance. Okay. He says, you know, what basically you look at the other five, I promise you rest. I promise you restoration. I promise you guidance, confidence, sustenance, healing. And then, then what happens is kind of like an emotional outburst of optimism and confident. And he says, my cup overflows. My cup overflows. In light of all the, the promises you've given me to how you're going to take care of me and stuff. And then he says, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life in this life, right? And he'll get help for today. And then he says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Help for today and hope for tomorrow. Sharon and I take a walk every morning. We do a three mile loop, try not to get hit by the cars in the dark. And, and, uh, um, and, and one of the things we pray for, for so many of our friends and sometimes for ourselves, is we pray for that, that they would ha get help for today and they would get hope for tomorrow. You know, and, and now here's the thing. We can let the Lord be our shepherd, okay? Um, or we can try to do it on our own. That, that's really it becomes the fundamental choice in life. And, 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 and if we go it along, alone, we're likely to get whacked more than we need to, okay? And, and, and suffer more than we need to. And, and Psalm 23, though, is a beautiful description of what life can be like when we make the Lord our shepherd. But let me read to you a parallel description that somebody wrote of what life will be like if we go it alone. Here's a parallel description of, of Psalm 23, making, our, making ourselves our shepherd. I am my own shepherd. I am always in need. Stumbling from mall to mall and shrink to shrink. Seeking relief, but never finding it. I creep through the valley of the shadow of death and fall apart. I fear everything from pesticides to power lines, and I'm, trying, I'm starting to act like my mother. I go to work. And I'm surrounded by enemies. I anoint my head with extra strength Tylenol. My Jack Daniels run, runneth over. <laughs> Surely misery and misfortune will follow me. And I will live in self-doubt the rest of my lonely life. But the psalmist had a different point of view, right? The psalmist said, allowed the Lord to be a shepherd. And, and, and it made all the difference. He gets seven reasons for hope, help for today and hope for tomorrow. With the Lord as his shepherd, he looked at his life and, and with confidence. He said, surely 
goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And then I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray together. Father, Lord, you are our shepherd. So we shall not be in want. Lord, make us lie down. Lead us beside that green grass and the quiet water. We pray that you'd restore our souls. That you'd guide us in the right paths. And even during those times when we walk through valleys that, that where we fear death, Remind us to fear no evil because you are with us. Even when we're surrounded by threats, would you prepare a sustaining table for us? Would you anoint our wounds with your healing oil? Would you cause our empty cups to overflow? In times when it feels like all is lost, remind us and help us to believe that because we are under your care, Goodness and love will surely follow us all the days of our lives. You'll give us help for today. And that when our time on this earth is over, we have hope for tomorrow. That we will dwell in your house forever. Amen.